Hey everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily Inostroza. How are you guys doing? So today I'm going to be talking about Black Lives Matter. And I know that this is a topic that has been all over the news for the past couple of weeks. I truly felt that it was very important for me to address this issue because by reflecting and thinking about all that is going on, I realized that by being silent, I am choosing to be complacent with what we have in the world right now. And what we have is not okay. It is not okay for black lives to be victims of senseless deaths and acts of violence. It truly breaks my heart to think about not only what has happened over the past couple of months, but just what has happened for the past centuries to human beings. George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Ahmaud Arbery are victims of systematic racism. Their deaths were the result of racist acts that are creating injustices for our entire black community. These are innocent lives that are being killed. And why? Because they're believed to be people who are burglars, who hold drugs, but no, none of them did any of what they were accused of, but yet their lives have been lost. And these are just three people of the endless list of black lives that have been lost in our society. A society where black lives consistently fall victims to police brutality, institutionalized racism, daily discrimination, oppression, and they deal with this every single day of their lives. If we all really want to make a change in this world, it begins with each and every one of us making the choice to speak up on the issue and say something about it. Each and every one of us must educate ourselves. We must speak up take a stand and challenge those who comply with a system of oppression. We must listen and learn from the black community and take appropriate action. And so today I want to share some of the voices from the black community in regards to the events that have happened over the past couple of weeks and to discuss how we can take action to create a future that will overcome oppression, discrimination, and injustices. And I hope that we can all listen and take something away from what John, Brianna and Sean have to share with us. Hey guys, my name is John and I live in Los Angeles, California. Hi, my name is Brianna Taylor. No relation to Brianna Taylor who passed from police brutality. Rest in peace to her. I am 25. I am a recent graduate of California State University Northridge and I'm a poet, a writer, a small business owner, and so many more. Hello, hello. My name is Sean Hill. I'm an actor, a spoken word artist, host, a workshop facilitator, and speaker. And humanitarian-wise, I've helped build two schools in Nepal and Malawi, Africa. The people who are against Black Lives Matter or just don't understand the movement fall into two camps. There is one group that's well-intentioned, and these people believe that all lives matter, including black lives. And then there's another group who are really shooting down the Black Lives Matter movement, just whether it's out of malice or they're just trying to be an antagonist. And so for that second group, really you can only hope that they get educated and get some guidance and really understand that there's no room for that in, in this day and age. But for the, the first group, the people who are well-intentioned, you're right, all lives do matter. But at this time, the Black Lives Movement is trying to shine a light on the fact that Black lives are being disproportionately taken, whether it's by the police or by people who claim to be neighborhood watch and assume someone's a criminal because they're jogging or they're wearing a hoodie. So the best analogy I've seen for this is the, the house fire example. If there's a house that's on fire and there's firefighters trying to put that fire out, it doesn't make sense to go up to the firefighters and say, hey, what about all these other houses? They're gonna say, well, yes, all these other houses matter, but right now we need to put this particular fire out. In that same vein, yes, all lives do matter. But right now, this movement is trying to shine a light on just the injustices and what these black lives are facing. The data shows that for a very long time, black lives have not mattered, hence, Black Lives Matter. We're really just trying to bring black lives to the same equal playing field. To anyone that's saying all lives should matter and I'm not racist for saying that, yes, you're not racist, but you are missing the point of the movement. 
I feel that Black Lives Mattering should never be considered a threat because its very existence is because Black lives are the ones being threatened on a regular basis. There's no protection for them and it's more so, it's not just a movement, but it's like so many other movements that are trying to promote fairness for Black people. I think ultimately Black lives should matter to all people because a world without Black lives is, dare I say it, bland. <laughs> that might come off kind of harsh, but I feel like Black people are are the ones who produce a lot of the pop culture that we see here. A lot of great inventions come from black people. A lot of families are black and being torn apart by systemic racism. So I think it's important for people to realize that our lives are important and that it's not just something that we chant because we don't feel like people know that. The issue is not the fact that black lives matter. I think the issue is more that people don't agree or people don't feel that our lives matter. So it's more so a cry for understanding, a cry for more recognition than anything. Black Lives Matter should be of importance to all people because it is literally, technically, for all people. When an injustice happens, the one group of people that happens the most of the injustices, there's so many, when there's an end to that, to that kind of police brutality or systemic racism or whatever the root causes of it, once that's ended, the system improves dramatically for all people. And it also includes all the police brutality to white people, Latinx people, to get to all the people from Asian Americans and, and just further and further and further. It absolutely says that even in the mission statement on the Black Lives Matter website, which I encourage you all to read and not just hear sound bites and ideas of what you think it might be from the news or from other people in, I'd say, in media. So what I want to talk about is the subtle, the subtle moments that we don't even think about, but they happen on a daily basis. When Ahmaud Arbery got shot in Georgia while going on a jog, it was it was really concerning because I'm relatively active and so I go on jogs around my neighborhood. And the very next time I spoke to my mom, she was concerned and she was asking me where I go jogging. And she would rather I stay on the major streets rather than going into any neighborhoods because you just never know what might happen, right? And so these are little things that not everyone thinks about, right? But when you have my skin color when you look like me you now have to think twice before you go jogging in any random neighborhood or before you put on a hoodie because of how people might perceive you and that could cost you your life luckily i've been blessed enough that i haven't had very many run-ins with police brutality or systemic racism affecting me to the point where I'm more disadvantaged. I think the fact that, if I'm being honest, colorism plays a part in that. The fact that I'm a lighter skinned black woman, then I'm able to probably have a better experience because of it. And that's my own privilege that I have to acknowledge and understand. But I have been in situations where I felt like I didn't belong because the area that I was in was predominantly white. I did feel like there were things that I shouldn't have access to because when I was younger, I went to a lot of predominantly white and Jewish schools and there weren't very many people who were similar in skin and not just to lump us all together like that but I remember in seventh grade specifically all of the black kids and when I say all of them kind of exaggerating but not really I would say there's probably 50 black kids in the entire school and about a third of them were in the seventh grade class and that was the class that I was in so I've had Plenty of experiences where I felt the oppression, but not firsthand have been blatantly disrespected for the color of my skin. The other time would be when I was put into the back of a police car because I matched the description of, of someone they were looking for. And they ransacked through the van that my I was borrowing from my mom at the time. And they just went through everything and just left it a mess. And they didn't answer any of my questions about, you know, what did they look like? Who was this person or whatever? or. What did they do? I was just escorted, put my hands, they just put my hands behind my back and then moved me over to the car. And I, I asked to not be inside the car also because I know it wouldn't feel good in there. And it didn't. And I almost uh, just started tearing up a little bit and kind of felt like uh, like I was caged, you know? Even that for that short time, even just for a short time, it felt awful in there. Like I had done something wrong and I had no power or control over what was happening to me. So it was very disturbing, very hard to go through. And then when I got out, the guy said, uh, sorry about that brother, you know? And he called me brother after thinking I was a, a, some kind of criminal at first. He looked like, I'd say maybe mixed uh, complexion kind of guy like me as well. So, it, you know, that added a little tint too the, of, of, 
of awkwardness and, and this kind of feeling that I wasn't greeted with this kind of approach in the first place, that I was assumed to be a criminal. So yeah, so that kind of hurt. Definitely, I felt like if my skin color was a different skin color, either I wouldn't have been treated like that or, you know, things could have been talked out easier, perhaps. It's okay to speak up. It's okay to, to challenge your friends, your coworkers, your family members when they say something that is not right or that you don't agree with. The whole purpose of this is treat others like you'd want to be treated. The easiest way to challenge your friends or challenge your family members when they say something that you you know that might be racist or that might be messed up is call them out. Say, hey, would, would you like it if you were treated like that? Would you like it if you were called that? A lot of us have friends and, you know, family members and coworkers who, if you ask them flat out, are you racist? Their answer would be no, right? But they will say subtle things while watching TV or they'll make certain assumptions when they see someone come into the door. And so these are the people who you need to call out. You need to be brave. This is 2020. We need, we need to move forward. Call them out. Don't be afraid to do it. Don't be afraid to have that conversation. It's okay. It's okay. The worst that happens is they defend themselves and they're entrenched in their views. And that's okay. You tried. And hopefully you can keep trying and eventually they can learn. For me, I think that it's all about intent and what your ultimate goal is and what you're trying to do. I understand that it's not easy all the time and you don't want to be looked at as someone who is saying the wrong thing or being tone deaf to the bigger issues at hand with some of the things that you may say without knowing that they have a racial negative connotation. And I think that it's really about intent, at least for me personally, I can't speak for all black people, um, but for me, if I hear something or read something or experience something that can be interpreted as racist, especially Especially from other people of color but the person who said it doesn't necessarily know that that's what they were saying I feel like I can forgive the ignorance if it's not coming from a place of malice like they weren't trying to be racist in what someone was saying or bigoted or having a certain prejudice against me like if I don't sense that coming then there are things I can forgive but I think ultimately to avoid all of that people really just have to be educated like when you're learning about the issues that are plaguing the black community to not really not be afraid to have the difficult conversations and not feel like you're gonna be judged for the things that you say because you are <laughs> if we're just being 100%, you are gonna be judged mostly because you're coming from a place of not understanding the culture firsthand anyway. So anything you really say is gonna be misconstrued by chance or like not understood or maybe it might be taken offensively, but as long as your intentions are good, there's a lot more people who are willing to help educate you, to help make you understand what the bigger picture is. I think it's just a problem when you're viewing propaganda or lies or things that you've heard without really having done any research and saying things that promote stereotypes or things that are just negative for the black community. I think that's where it's almost, there's no real way you can have a healthy conversation if you're coming from that place. But I think if you're coming from a place where you really wanna learn, you really wanna help, you're really open and honest about your own privileges and accepting that and trying to change that, I think that's when the conversation can go better no matter what you're saying, as long as you're open and willing to like learn about it. The fortunate, wonderful thing is that there's so many resources that are readily accessible to you. There's groups like White Lives for Black Life, for Black Lives Matter. There's groups like uh, Filipino Lives for Black Lives Matter. There's so many other groups out there that are already doing the work and spreading the awareness of how to be informed on these topics and how to speak about them in, a, in an appropriate way. And there's just so many resources now between books to articles to workshops. You could attend a Black Lives Matter workshop or group training or any just any of the meetings that they have, really. That would be the place to be informed and learn and, and listen, you know, to listen more than we speak right now would be really big. I think if anything, it's almost like you just, <laughs> you just gotta relearn how to talk about people like they're human beings. So that's, that's really all civil rights and human rights and natural rights is about being treated with the dignity and respect that you have a certain integrity and morals that you live by. So it's just a matter of applying those same kind of morals and beliefs to someone else that doesn't look like you basically, you know? So yeah, we're all human. Literally. Knowledge. Knowledge is power. Just educate yourself. Educate the people around you. 
right? If, if you just look around your circle of friends and it doesn't look too diverse, maybe you need to reach out to different circles more. Maybe you need to expand that and get different perspectives. There are several Netflix shows and documentaries on you know multiple streaming sites, not just Netflix, that really just show what has happened in history and what is still happening today. So even watching that and just understanding what people are talking about, if you want to be an ally, you need to be open to understanding. You need to be open to listening. And that's the best way is once you understand what's happening, then you can you will easily know where the change needs to needs to come. There's so many opportunities. I think first it's acknowledging your privilege and not in a I think I'm better than kind of acknowledgement. More like I know that the things that have happened in my life are because of the position I've been placed by society. So just simply because of the color of your skin. So if you're a white person in America, you're because of the system that you were born into, you're automatically placed in a higher level of position. So I think acknowledging that first is a first step so that you can accept it and then you can work to change it. Understanding which the privileges that you have and using that to benefit the community I think is just a, a great first step. Also you can ask the difficult question. Asking people in your immediate circle like have I ever done anything to make you feel less than or do have I ever said anything that maybe has come off racist or ignorant or something like that. It might not be good to hear. It might make you cry. It might make you uncomfortable it might make you feel bad but I think feeling that way now is going to help put you so much further in life when it, it comes to accepting changes and promoting reform for a lot of the systems that are plaguing the black community today that's something that's being thought about and and re-dialogued all the time essentially it's almost between being an ally in one way but then I'd say being a like a comrade or a partner in arms also in another way is actually better in a sense. To not feel like this is a separate issue than, than yours. When you see someone that happens to be black being brutalized in a video or on the street, to not say, oh, how terrible for that black person. How can I be an ally to them? You just would think how terrible for that person. That's wrong, that's an injustice that shouldn't be happening to anybody, right? So, so once you start actually noticing that, yes, certain things are happening to people of one race more than another or things like that, to get to a place where like, but it, it shouldn't happen to anybody, right? That's the whole goal here. That is the whole goal uh, to get to a place where we treat each other as human beings first, and then we notice the skin color and the things like that that make us so different and beautiful and, and rich to enjoy in this life. Put the humanity first, I think. Put humanity first. You just, you would care about someone that you saw in these videos if it happened to your own family, if it happened to your own brother or sister or mother or father, just to put them in the place of the person being brutalized or harmed. I encourage everybody to just educate yourself, do the research. There's gonna be several links. I'm sure Emily is gonna include some links in the description. Just read, read these articles, look at these organizations and see what they're trying to do. And then look at your local government, the mayor, the city council, all the different people at the local level have a lot more power than you think. So a lot of people only vote every four years for the president, but the president is so high up. There's so much policy that gets done at a lower level and we can change that, but we need to educate ourselves and we need to just spread the word and get everybody out to go out and vote. You can make a difference with even the smallest gestures. There's no real way to say like, you have to do it this way, you have to do it that way. You can make a difference by simply streaming a video and whose profits go to Black Lives Matter or another organization that's helping promote the wellness of the black community. Also doing your research, just taking the time. If it, it might be hard, it might be difficult, it might be uncomfortable, but watch movies about slavery. And I know it, I hate watching them myself because it hits really close to home but I think understanding and honestly what people see in movies is not even half as bad or as horrific as it actually did happen because that's Hollywood and they like to glamorize certain situations but a lot of these movies stem in truth and once you understand kind of where it came from you can understand how some policies that are in place for black people today are specifically targeted to harm the community so I think if you understand what happened and take time to do research and look at articles and understand certain things, you're a lot further advanced in guiding
igniting these conversations and not be able not be afraid to have the difficult conversations challenge your friends challenge your peers challenge your parents if you hear something that doesn't sound fair or if someone says well it could be considered this you can be like okay i can respect your opinion but you know just kind of being a voice of the reason for people and asking questions and coming from a place of love and compassion and wanting an, a legitimate change to happen i think the biggest thing i would love for people to know is that all lives matter and that that idea that phrase that chant came after black lives matter so in terms of creating a protest to a protest it's missing the entire root cause of why the first protest was started. If you're protesting people that just want justice and equality for themselves, that's an issue into itself. When uh, people equate the KKK to Black Lives Matter and make it sound like it's a threat or associate certain actions that people say they did in the name of Black Lives Matter and remember that that's not on behalf of the organization and the actual movement leaders that would never allow some of the atrocities to happen that people are saying in the name of Black Lives Matter. I think it's very important to make that distinction and also to do the research, to do the research on your own, to not trust the sound bites that you see and actually go to the roots of the videos that you're seeing so you can get the whole story for yourself. And I think too many times we, we're being pit against each other in things like this and matters like this where all our lives are at stake, all of our lives are at stake. I'd say the one last thing to really hit that home is that when a president has said, God bless America, anyone that believes in all lives matter, do you also believe that he should say, God bless all countries? Or is it okay to just talk about the one group of people we're talking about? And, and that's okay. That doesn't mean the rest of the countries are not blessed. That doesn't mean the rest of the countries are terrible or worse, right? But coming from this country and the way we support our country and our systems, we kind of have to work on one thing at a time. And so this group is meant and dedicated to these certain actions and steps to end systemic racism, police brutality, injustice in the judicial systems, to basically get to a point where black communities are thriving and not just surviving, right? So I, I would just say question where you're getting your resources from. Share your resources with someone that you are arguing with and please unblock those friends that you disagree with and apologize and open up the dialogue and much love again. Um, if we're not here for each other, I don't know what we're doing here, to be honest. I hope you just keep that dialogue going as best you can, all right? Thank you, John, Brianna, and Sean for sharing your perspective and speaking on the issue. I know that this is an uncomfortable and controversial topic, and I really just wanna show my appreciation for your vulnerability and your courage in speaking up on this topic. I truly believe that it is actions like these where we take the time to listen and learn from the black community and are able to take something away as to what we can do to change the situation and progress forward as a society. Change begins with each and every one of us. And I hope that by me speaking up on this issue and sharing some knowledge from the black community, we can all learn something and gain the courage to continue speaking on this topic and learning and doing what we can to create justice. In the description of this video, I've also included a list of resources to learn how we can educate ourselves, ways we can help, organizations that we can support and donate to, and even movies and books so that we can all learn something. I hope that you guys can all check out those resources and take the time to educate yourselves. If you guys have any questions or comments, then drop them in the comment section below. And if you guys support this movement, give this video a like. I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you guys for watching.